Hey, what's going on everybody? It is Gully here. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be showing you what exercises you can do to help grow your economy in Polytopia. Let's get started. Basically, you want to hop into a creative game and choose your tribe of choice. I like barter, so I'll go with them. Set it to infinity and select zero opponents. And then, you know, whatever map type you want. Basically, what you want to do is you just want to practice leveling up your cities in specific orders, see what works and what doesn't. Your goal should be to try and get like 30 or 35 stars per turn by turn 10. That's generally considered pretty decent. And keep in mind, you'll be able to try and do that without any pressure from any other tribes. Since, you know, you selected zero opponents. So while I go ahead and do this a little bit, let's first talk about why you'd want to do this exercise in the first place. Well, developing your cities is crucial in every single game of Polytopia you play. This is one of the most important things you can do. I would argue even more important than knowing it, like, proper troop movements. Although, keep in mind, if you move your troops efficiently, that will save you stars as well. Now, I am not doing so hot here. I did not move my warriors in very efficient patterns. I also got kind of unlucky on this first village here. But hey, that's why we practice, right? Basically, doing this will help you figure out what patterns works, what doesn't, and like I said, it's going to help you get generally better at the game. So, you know, I'll, I'm just leveling up my cities. Hopefully, you guys can use some of the stuff I do. Maybe it'll help you out a little bit. Now, we see it's turn 7, and I'm making 16 stars per turn. It's going to take a pretty big miracle to hit the 30 goal. And if I don't hit it, that's no big deal. We can just try it again. It's good practice. And I also suggest doing this on various other map types. That'll help you optimize your warrior movements. And a whole bunch of other fun stuff. That's going to help you get better at the game. So I went ahead and I got riding just so I could explore this terrain a little bit quicker. Should help me a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and take roads as well. And that'll let me move on to this village over here on this turn. There we go. Now if I use my stars right, we might be able to hit 30. Now you should really focus on getting your cities up to level 2 and 3, because of course whenever you upgrade it to level 2, you get the choice of workshop, which is going to give you one extra star per turn. And then, whenever you level it up to level 3, you can get resources, which it counteracts how much it costs to level up that city in the first place. It really only costs one star, if you think about it. And yeah, it looks like 30 stars per turn. We did, in fact, hit the goal, which is pretty awesome. Uh, part of that is because this is a drylands map. That does make it significantly easier. If you want to challenge yourself, go on other map types. And like I said, going on other map types will also help you, you know develop your cities on different terrain and to get you some practice doing that because not every game you play is just going to be dry lands you know so it's good to have practice on all map forms once i get my cities up to level three i don't really pay that much more attention to them of course if you get a level five city that gives you a giant and it also gives you your metropolis monument which can help you level up some other cities as well so that's always important to remember that rune gives me resources which is pretty sweet and I have 46 stars to work with on the end of turn 10, so let's go ahead and just use those where we can. Move this warrior. I mean, moving warriors isn't really that important anymore. We're pretty much done. Guess I'll go ahead and take mathematics. And if I chop here in my capital, I can put a sawmill here. That'll give me a giant, which also gives me the Metropolis Monument. Which, using that, we can chop once here. Put a Park of Fortune there. And also put a Lumber Hut there. That'll give us population growth. Probably should have taken border growth there. That would have given me more trees to chop. But that's fine. Clear those two trees. Put a sawmill here. Giant. And there, at the end of turn 10, we're making 38 stars per turn. Not bad at all. But for a drylands map, it's not too difficult. Remember, you go creative, pick your tribe, zero opponents, select your map type. We'll go for archipelago. Archipelago has some interesting terrain generation to the point where you can't always anticipate how it's going to form. A good rule of thumb that I use is whenever you first start the game, move your starting units towards resources that you can harvest with the tech that you start with. So with barter in this case, it's animals. 
That way, whenever you get to your first village, hopefully we have it right here, we're guaranteed some resources that we can hunt in order to level up our village, you know? There's a village, there's a village. Now again, this terrain generation, kinda wacky. I'm gonna go ahead and level up this city this turn. Just gotta chop a little bit, that's fine. And we'll train another warrior. Five stars per turn on turn three. That's not too shabby. Yeah, this is very cool looking terrain, I will say. So I already have hunting and forestry. I'm gonna go ahead and take organization as well. Just because that's gonna be relatively crucial for some cities, I'm assuming, to get up to that um, very important level three. And guys, if you're playing barter, do not hesitate to chop your forests. Just be mindful of which ones you decide to chop in case you decide to go for sawmills later in the game. That's something I need to work on a little bit. I'm actually going to get an explorer here. So that gives us some valuable information on the locations of two other villages. And this guy will be in charge of getting these two villages, I guess. Let's level up this city, take resources, and we can probably train another warrior. This guy can go to that village, and this guy can go to that village. Now the problem is, with this archipelago land type, we aren't really able to expand fast enough. That's going to end up stunting our growth a little bit. That is something to be mindful of. Like, we have 34 stars, but we can't really use them, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to go ahead and take mathematics. We can level up our capital. I guess we'll take population growth, because I'll probably end up getting fishing. We can go ahead and level up this city, too more population growth and yeah let's end our turn hoping there's another village like right here somewhere there's one turn nine and we're making 14 stars per turn not the best but i mean for this land type what are you gonna do but yeah like i said it's good to practice this on other map types as well take a workshop here and we might as well level up this city we can't this turn unfortunately we can get our park of fortune though that will allow us to do it. Using those stars, we can level up this city over here. Get us a giant. And we will end our turn. This is turn 10, so it's my last turn to try and get 30 stars per turn. It's not going to happen. I mean, unless this city clutches somehow, but it physically cannot. Looks like we'll get up to 24. Yeah, we can get 25, actually. If we just put a sawmill there and then fish. So 25 stars per turn, turn 10. But yes, I very highly recommend you guys trying this out yourself. It'll help you develop your cities faster, more efficiently. That's going to allow you to outgrow your opponent in terms of economics, which is very crucial to this game. I know a lot of people like to pretend that you can only win if you got a beefy military. That's only half the battle. If you can't support it, then poopy poopy, you know? Well, yes, I hope you guys did enjoy this little one-off video. I know it was a little bit different. If you did enjoy, and if it helped you out, be sure to hit the like button down below. Subscribe for more epic Polytopia tutorials like this one. If you guys want to see more kind of chillax tutorial videos like this one, do let me know in the comments below. Join my Discord server if you want to talk more Polytopia, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a spectacular day.